Hi y'all, it's Charlene from the Crafty Art Shack and we're back here today with another challenge video. I'll tell you more about that in a little bit, so let's get on with the crafts. Let's go! Alright, for this video, our inspiration came from our Green Acres. She does beautiful, beautiful projects. Now, we didn't copy any of her projects, but we thought we'd play off of that type of projects that she does. And these just absolutely turned out beautiful. She does beautiful work. Go check out her channel. And here is the other channel that we drew our inspiration from. It's called Our Shabby Cottage. This lady does some amazingly beautiful uh, decors for the home and many other things. Go check out her channel. She has some awesome crafts. You don't want to miss either of these ladies. They've done awesome work and I really enjoy watching their channels. So go check them out. All right, here we go with DIY number one. All right, you guys know that Christmas is right around the corner and this video is a Christmas in July challenge. Now I got this crock from the thrift store and what we're going to do is make it over for a Christmas gift. All of my videos that I'm focusing on right now are going to be Christmas gifts. Now we're going to make these gifts in this video and later on between now and Christmas time we're going to package these and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that and that will be a video. So we are getting ready for that video now and we are going to make these. So what I'm doing is I got these rub on transfers from Amazon and I'm seeing which ones I think will look best on this and this thing kind of looked like a milk jug to me. So what I'm doing is going around the edge of this and trimming it out so that not so much of that sticky stuff gets on to my crock and you guys you really need to let these things dry overnight if you're going to do this because if you don't when you stick these to it if you're pulling up that extra paper that's on the edge where you see the white that is going to pull up some of your paint and you're going to have to go back and touch it up which I did have to but had I let this sit overnight I wouldn't have had that problem so you make sure you let them sit overnight but for video purposes I needed to get this done and I did have to go back and touch that paint up so if you do it like I do you can fix it it's just going to take a little work so we're going to rub on that transfer we're going to use our tool and rub it on there really good and then we'll peel this off and we'll do the same with that little flower. Now here's where I went around the edge of this. Now I took inspiration from our shabby cottage and from our green acres. Um, both of those channels did something like this at one time and I took the inspiration from them to recreate these and I made them into my own. Now they may have used different containers. Now what you see me doing here is I'm adding some Mod Podge over the top of this to make it to seal it in and then we'll see the rest of this at the final reveal after I add some embellishments. Now this is the Christmas in July recreation inspiration um, it happens every 8th of the month. It's hosted by Amanda over at Six Kids and a Glue Gun. Myself, Crafty Art Shack, and our co-host this month is Beth over at Pearl Treasures Designs. Now you're going to want to go check out their videos because they're doing some awesome crafts and you don't want to miss it. And also check out the playlist in the description box below. Because they're, and these, the links to these channels will be there as well. Because they're doing some awesome crafts and you sure don't want to miss it and they're going to get tons of Christmas inspiration. I know it's early you guys but good gracious time flies. Look we're already halfway through this year. So if you are a creator and you're interested in joining this uh, cha open challenge send me a message and I will help you get started doing this in with our with our group um yeah i'm stumbling over my words today <laughs> i do that every day what's what's today's difference from the other day anyway 
So anyway, I hope y'all join us because we have lots of fun here, lots of laughs, and we really enjoy crafting. So let's get on with the rest of the video. And don't forget, go check out these channels and check out that playlist. Now, here we go with DIY number two. Now for this next Christmas gift inspiration, we're going to make some decorative uh, spoons and spatula for our little jar we just made. Now these are going to be packaged, remember, in another video. So stay tuned so you can see how we do that. Now what I'm doing is I'm laying my spatula. Spoon is not quite wide enough, but we're going to lay half of that design on there. And those designs actually came from the Dollar Tree. I forgot I even had them. And so uh, I'm looking at my lightweight spackly, and it looks awful crusty. So <laughs> um, it, it's been sitting around hanging out, and I'm trying to mix it up, see if it works, uh, if I can get it to work like I want it to. It's not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, uh, what am I going to add to this? Let's see. Do what? Hold on. Now I'm going to take and add in some white chalk paint into this because I want to make it where it rubs on smoother and I'm just going to make sure all of my stencil is laid down nice and flat. Now this is a cheap Dollar Tree one. It would work better if you had a little thicker stencil but I'm going to take and smear this on here and make sure that it is on my spoon really good and then once I get done doing that I'm going to go in there and I'm going to lift my stencil off very carefully. Now it is going to pop off any extra that was on top of that. And then I'm going to rub the edge of it and make sure I have all of this off of here. And I'm just patting down anything that I think needs to be done. And then I'll do the same to the little spatula there. And I'm just cleaning up all the bits and pieces and sticking them back in my little bucket there. Now when I get done with that, I'm going to go and take and go over each of these little marks with Mod Podge and make sure that it is pressed down into that Mod Podge, that Mod Podge presses down into that lightweight spackling. Now I did wait for it to completely dry and then I am going to, after I do that part, then I am going to go back and paint the whole handle with Mod Podge on the top side. I'm not going to do the back or the sides or anything else just going to go over that whole top side but first thing I want to make sure is that I hit all of this spackling first and let it almost dry and then go back and touch up that whole front of that spatula with that um, Mod Podge and it's very important that you do that so that this does not come off in future uses. These are meant to be simply decoration. These are not meant for people to use to cook with anymore because they are, and here's where I'm going over the whole top of that uh, spoon, and I did the same on the spatula. And then you, once it dries, we're going to put some embellishments on it, and you will see this at the final reveal. And this makes the cutest little gift. And I'll show you when we do the other video how we're going to package everything up to make it look so special for somebody's gift. And I can't wait for the person to receive it. Here we go with DIY number three. Now for this one, we had to go outside and get the chops all out. And we are going to take in, sorry about the camera moving, I was trying to cut and didn't realize the table was shaking because of the salt every time I used it. But we're gonna cut pieces to make some little wood plaques. And this is old fencing that Beth and I had picked up off the side of the road. And you see the cruddy end down there? I'm going to cut that away, throw that part away, and this is what we end up with. So now part of this is painted on one side. It's not painted on the other side. You want to paint on the side that already has the paint on it because it will use less of the paint when you're using this. And we're just going to go around the whole edge of this and put some white Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint on here. And then the next thing that I'm going to do now, uh, yeah, that camera again. Now you notice I got this uh, pad sitting here. This is for 
my stencil brush so that I can pounce off some of that extra. I like using these because they stick to my table and they don't move. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting some painter's tape down on my little board. Now you need to make sure it's pretty dry and I am going to make some little stripes on here and I should have used a bigger piece there and me I just went and added another piece to it you know you don't have to do that just add that first that long piece right there and you'll be just fine but it was pieced together and I didn't want that line to be there now I'm going to take my brayer push it into the board really good take my stencil brush stick it in my paint dab it on the pad and keep going down until you almost get it to where it doesn't have hardly anything at all then you're going to pounce up and down on your little uh, sign right where the tape was till you get it the desired look now I didn't need a real good coat on here just like I didn't need a real good coat of white paint I just needed a little bit and then you're going to go pull that off while your paint is still wet okay and then once you pull it off you're going to want to dry it now for this next part I got this stencil off of Amazon back last year and what I'm doing is I already added tape on the parts that I don't want to get on my sign and I am going to do the same thing that I just did the same process for making my little lines I'm going to do the same thing here and we are making a little rustic uh, tear tray sitter this can sit on somebody's counter it can sit on tear tray they can hang it on uh, tree they could do all kinds of things to decorate with this and I will show you what we're going to do with these when we do our gift wrapping video now you noticed I didn't have to go back into the chalk paint I just went up there to that part of the pad where it was already on there pretty thick and then I'm just going to lift it up and look at it to make sure I got it the darkest I want it to be now you can make it real dark or you can make it real light I wanted mine real light because I didn't want I wanted the two contrasting colors to be there and I want it to look rustic now the next thing I did is I put a little bit of hot glue on the back and I'm going to glue this uh, twine to it now that twine came from the Dollar Tree and then I'm going to wrap around like in an X pattern so that it looks very rustic and we're going to add a few more embellishments and we'll see this one at the final reveal now here's some of the things that Beth and I worked on this week for our booth. Here's Beth. She's checking out all those beads on that lampshade to make sure that they're all there. We This is the end of our first store that we stopped at and she put this on and started laughing. I turned around and saw what she was doing and took a picture of her. You guys, we had so much fun on this trip. It was absolutely hilarious that day so we found this little radio right here this is a vintage 1931 Crosley uh, floor model uh, old radio we picked it up and it did not have the guts to it but it had the cabinet and we picked it up because it was in really good condition and then we found this one now this one was in pretty rough condition I'm gonna show you a picture of what it looks like in the rougher condition but it's not the exact one now this one we could have picked up pretty inexpensive too but we didn't tell me if you would have picked this one up even if you knew that the radio might not work inside because the inside the cord was dry rotted and a lot of the stuff on the inside of it was crumbling now zenith made this radio now here's the back of the inside of a picture we found of one of them and here is the back cover and this one um, was in pretty rough shape and we didn't know if we could fix it but you guys you tell me if you would have picked this up or not this originally sold in for $850 in 1929 that's when this was made and it was made by Zenith but y'all let me know what you think and if we should have picked that up now here's some quick clips of our booth and I am telling you the booth is doing amazingly wonderful. Remember that birdhouse I made in one of my videos that's up in the top of that cabinet? It's gone. It's sold. You guys, it's sold. I was really surprised and it sold for a good penny. 
Yeah, it did. And here is just a clip of some of our shelves and stuff. We have been constantly changing this over the past three weeks because the stuff is not staying on the shelves. And you guys, if you ever thought about opening a booth, don't think about it. Just do it. If you can, figure out a way. All right, here we go. Let's get on with the rest of the video. All right, at this time, we'd like to thank our subscribers. We love you bunches. We really appreciate everything from the bottom of our heart that you do for our channel. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Words aren't enough to thank you for what you've done for us in this channel. And here we go with the final reveal. y'all we're back from the craft desk and didn't these just turn out awesome well if you like this content subscribe like and share because it really helps our video out and for all our subscribers thank you so much for everything you do for us by subscribing to the channel and we'll see you in the next episode of the crafty art shack we'll see you later bye <laughs> Now here is Beth and I when we were standing in front of the Avalia Mall and we announced that we were getting a booth. Now here is what the booth looked like before and I'm going to just let this play out. Look at this. This is when the previous owner was there and this is what he had in his booth. He had a lot of interesting things in there. But we will show you the pictures of what it looks like after we came in. And here it is after a paint job, some new shelves, and all of the different little things that you can add in to make it look very beautiful. And we've still got some work to do. If you notice, the lights aren't up there yet. But look at that sign Beth made for the kids' corner. And look at all the stuff there is tons of thrift flips that we did this week and you could just imagine and there's tons that of stuff that we've made in our videos here if you see something in there that if you watch our videos you can see some of the things that we made and put in there and then there's a ton of thrift flips that we put in there and i call them thrift flips they may have come from somewhere else all right, y'all, if y'all go check out our community tab on our YouTube channel, you will find the channel lineup for the week there on our community tab. So if you ever want to know what's going on with our channel or new things that are happening or anything like that, go check out that community tab. That's where we're posting all of our information that is important for th that moment in time. So go check us out. So you guys, if you like this content, subscribe. Hit that notification bell and give us that.